Yeah. So, windows. Breakable windows. Smashy, smashy. We love to smashy. Um, this is my Macedonia map. Um, and these are placeholder windows because when I import this into a game, uh, Ground Branch or Sandstorm, I will use their window solutions. Um, but I want to have the feel of the map and test it out and so on. So, uh, in brief, uh, for some reason it's not working in the blueprint view. I have a frame mesh, which um, just a simple mesh. I've defined four sockets. We like sockets, which are where the panes will go. And then I've got a single pane model which can go at those four positions. So keep it simple. The glass material, um, kind of standard stuff, but um, yeah, it looks quite nice. Then how's that made? There's different aspects. Um, so first of all, there is a sort of noise texture I've stolen from somewhere. Uh, which I use to vary the opacity of the window to give it a sort of smudgy streaky effect. Um, the opacity is also varied by a Fresnel factor and the Fresnel thing means that when you look side on it becomes more opaque. It's a very standard optics thing but that gives it a nice bit of reality. It works better this side because of the reflection. So side on relatively opaque and you can control um, I'm just going to move this over here so I can show you while I'm tweaking it but if I change the maximum opacity you can see that has an effect and there's a minimum opacity at zero well you can't see much difference now if you're facing straight on if I change that to zero or 0.5 so you can get different materials like plastic, plastic sheeting, I've got one that's a bit like that. Um, you can change the scale of things, you can change the Fresnel exponent. So I've got quite a low one so to make it more visible, if you make it something like 8, it's a more subtle effect. So that's probably closer to reality, but I don't do subtle. I don't do subtle. Um, and then I've lost it. Well, take that as you will. I've lost the window. Um, I was doing something there, I can't remember what I was doing. And the cube amount, what we have here is a standard thing again where you take the vector you're looking at and you rotate a cube map which is basically a sort of generic sky. So this is good for outside views. I need to do a version for inside but I haven't got around to that yet. And uh, it's also a bit of texture to put on top as well. So that all gets uh, interpolated between that and the reflection. So as I change the cube amount you get more reflection from outside. So that's a little bit too much. And then this is zero which is just a bit dead. So that's without any reflection. So it's all faked obviously. 0.5 seems to be the sweet spot, but that gives you just the sense of reality. It doesn't stand up to scrutiny, but that's not a bad window texture. The inside needs to have a different cube map, which I can do. Uh, let me just um, do that so to show you how it works. So face in, face out, and all I want to do let's have a little fun, no, um, find a cube map, I need to move it out of there but there is somewhere um, a range of cube maps, there we go, so I don't think I'm going to find a particularly good, oh why not sunset, so it might look a bit weird, <coughs> but the inside I need to find my glass. So face out. It may need to be the other way around. But this 
is now the wrong way around. But you can see immediately the effect of that. Uh, I'd like to do something better than this, but I'm just going to swap that around. That's annoying. Totally lost. I've got a second screen and I normally use it. So now I've swapped that around. Again, doesn't set up to scrutiny, but it's a darker, warmer reflection on the inside and a daylight reflection on the outside. And that's now been changed to all my windows. Uh, I don't have to do anything further. Um, okay, so that's my window texture. There are tutorials on this. But that's, yeah, not bad. I've then made a blueprint. Um, for this, which is the frame plus four of those panels, four of those panes. They're hard to see, but they're there. Right, I don't know why what I did has fixed it, but I've reparented these collision boxes and uh, they now appear where they should appear. Let me just make them not visible in game. Uh, wherever that was, there we are. Hidden in game. Okay. Uh, what else do I do? So these are box collision components, and I have turned on the on component begin overlap event. And what I do is break it for some reason. Uh, what I do is just test it's not the player. Um, I might need to change that in case we have the rifle held by the player, we'll smash a glass pane and maybe that is attached to the pawn. Anyway, I need to look at that later, but for testing purposes it's fine. Um, so if you get something overlapping, that's not the player, we assume it's a projectile of some sort, and we call a function to smash the pane, and we tell it which pane we want to smash. That could be perhaps automated, but this is just easiest to do quickly. And here is the function which does a bit of housekeeping to make sure it's not got a stupid parameter. Um, checks that the pane is not already being destroyed. It's possible that it could just be overlapped twice in a short period of time. And if that's the case, we then look at our smash sounds. So I've made an array of sound bass just to give a few different varieties of smash sound. So there's similar but different smashing sounds. So if you've got more than zero, then pick a random one between the zero and the number of ones minus one. So pick a random array uh, index. Get that as the sound. The location is the location of the pane. Uh, I'm not messing with any of this stuff, but you can. Uh, and that just far and forget the sound. Then I create a destructible mesh component. <coughs> I manually attach, so I have to set the position here using the transform of the pane, which includes rotation but doesn't need to. Um, I teleport it there, I don't want to create any more overlaps. Um, I set what kind of destructible mesh it is to the one that's defined here, I'll come back to that. And then we apply damage lots in order to smash it and I give it a downwards impulse of not too much. Um, it would be nice to make it smash out in the direction that the projectile is coming from, but to do that you need to get the hit event. To get a hit event you need to do things with physics I don't want to do, so I just make it fall in a sort of neutral downward direction. And then when I'm done I destroy the pane of glass, so that just carries on and then destroys itself. The sound will destroy itself and the pane is removed. And Let's just compile that, make sure it works. Yeah, um, and that's about it, the destructible mesh. To do that, you need to go to your plugins, go to your built in, find your Apex destruction. This is in 4.20, you're probably on a later version, but I think the same principle. There is, of course, a new destruction system in later engines, but I'm just using the old one. You need to enable it, restart, and that then gives you the option for any mesh to create destructible mesh, but you don't get that option unless you've enabled that plugin. So I went to my destructible mesh, which I created. Hard to see, but there's a pane of glass there somewhere, hiding. Um, 
and I fractured it with a lot of bits of glass and you can see that's not working let's fracture that do it you know those are the bits it will fragment into and on my normal um, sort of setup I don't have a projectile firing thing in my character to test with uh, so I've made a little testy one um, where I've made a sort of projectile and a sort of gun and I'll just line up a couple of those with the window and these are activated by walking to them so let's see what happens There we go. One last thing to say about windows is refraction and here we have uh, a material input and the refraction is normally one. Uh, this is an optical thing, it's a real thing and I'm setting it for my window material to one point something where the something varies with the opacity which varies with the noise texture. Uh, this is relatively low, I think glass is normally 1.15 but I set it to what worked best by default refraction gives you slightly janky effects, it works well in the middle of a material but at the edges you get just garbage. So um, there is a cost to this but um, you can set it to have lost it. Ok, refraction. Refraction mode, pixel, normal offset, um, but it basically um, works better than this for some reason. Haven't played with that. Um, yeah, there's stuff you can play around with, but basically, without that set, the effect looks a bit weird. And the last thing I want to show is how to retrofit my level with lots of windows. So um, I've got a process. So for each of these mesh parts I have defined sockets for the windows with a uniform, I said uniform, uh, Y and Z. So that's common to all meshes, that simplifies it. Um, and then to add windows I find my basic window is the same size for all walls. I could change that but this makes it easier. I then inspect that and see that it is house wall C blank 12. I did a lot of cutting, copying and pasting so the names are fairly meaningless but the point is blank 12 so if I go right click attach to I just type in whoop, blank 12 press return and I pick window 1 and do the same for this one. Blank 12 return window 2. Now these windows haven't moved because it's kept the offsets but if I now select them all and then zero all this it can take several goes because Unreal Engine but um, there you go, there's something definitely broken with my blueprint, I don't know what it is. Um, but there you go and I can just repeat that for all the walls two windows needed and then you know fairly quickly I've got uh, got my windows in place. So that's really all I wanted to show you um, and I'll leave you with the window shooting thing.